Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, this is a picture of our hip flexors. I'm going to talk a little bit about the hip flexors today and the role of the sit-up. Um, I was recently confronted with having to program sit-ups into a client's routine, and I normally don't program sit-ups into people's routines. Not so much because I think they'll hurt people. I think there's a better way to train the abdominals and the obliques, and I think that sit-ups um, also, you know, will involve the lumbar spine. We just want as much stability through that area as possible, and it's very easy to get the lumbar spine involved by virtue of hip flexors. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, hip flexors overall and why any more so is I'm probably less uh, prone to give someone sit-ups, especially if they sit a lot for their job. And I just wanted to start uh, my little spiel here with where the hip flexors are located. And you'll see them, and this is going deep to superficial, or closer to the bone, more what you can see on the outside. And you see the iliopsoas muscle is composed of the psoas portion and the iliacus portion on the pelvis. And it's an interesting muscle group in that it attaches in the lumbar spine or originates, I forget which, and that's my bad. Um, but it, like I say, starts there and goes down into the front and inserts or originates in the top of the femur. And that's what, it's a hip flexor, it says the name implies, will drive the knee up as you flex the hip. So they're located right there. Um, they are out often short. Or, you know, they're, yeah, short because, you know, you sit. They're not actively contracted, but they're short. And over time, that gives you gluteal amnesia. I've heard um, people in the fitness industry refer to this as gluteal amnesia. It's the lower half of the double cross syndrome that Shirley Sarman talks about. And you'll see it in people, the, up, the upper cross is the uh, shoulder posture forward, neck extended. But these are already tight, and we're doing nothing to dissuade that in any individual that sits a lot if we do a lot of sit-ups. So... Here I am with someone who is needing to pass a armed services physical fitness test, which has sit-ups as a component, and as a coach, as a trainer, I want to get this person as uh, performing optimally as possible while minimizing injury. So that's a double, that's a that's a crossroads right there for you because I consider my primary job is to keep you healthy as long as possible. Uh, but the second component is um, how to get you to perform optimally as healthy as possible. And, and there's a fine line there. So you always got to weigh cost benefit. And so I have a young man and he's in good health. He's in good shape on the outside of things. What we did was look at the sit up and go back and see what's actually at play and just kind of use your own judgment on it. And what I did was I looked back at the sit up and I read some things about it and what gets people in trouble. First of all, let's just say, let's take out the injury component to it and let's see how people do. Well, people have an undue involvement in the exercise a lot of times by virtue of using the hip flexor muscle group a little too much in that exercise. And you'll see this when people will like pick the butt up, pick the belt buckle up, and then slam the butt to the ground and propel that torso forward toward the knees. As you can see, and I've got a little, for lack of a slide stand here, I've got um, an internet connection, and I'm going to use this to just reinforce and just kind of have the sit up in your uh, brain here um, as a point of reference. So you can see they would be located right around here. And you can see how they're short. Now they can kind of keep the abdominals from doing the bulk of the work. So, doing a little research and knowing what I know about anatomy, you can take out the hip flexors roll if you activate the glutes. It's either or because it those are both agonists and protagonists, you know, vice versa. If the hip flexors are working, the glutes are lengthening. And if the glutes are shortening, 
the, the hip flexors are lengthening. So what I try to emphasize personally in my um, clients programming um, is more gluteal activation type exercises and you got to have a nice natural S curve throughout that movement without any spinal flexion but a neutral spine throughout to target the hips. So with the sit up we place my clients heels and right in front of an immovable you know piece of material I think we had a Pilates um, reformer one well, has a, a a bar that goes across much like a barbell you could use a barbell and wedge the plates on either side on both sides and instead of having someone push down on tops of the feet which does nothing to dissuade the hip flexors involvement in this exercise we want to push our heels back toward our butt and against that bar to promote gluteal activation and less hip, hip flexor so that work then shifts toward the abdominals and that's what we did and you and you promote a nice neutral uh, spine by virtue of that and you also make the exercise shift more toward the abdominals the way they should be but you know then I'm, I'm still watching double time at his spine to make sure everything's nice and sound and if I see that lumbar move um, then you know you cut it because you don't want to train wrong and you know we get back into it once you know I give them feedback and and see what's going on and see if we can't correct it and go back into it but that's my thoughts on the sit-up I didn't dismiss it out of hand I've, done, I've grown up doing sit-ups uh, all my life and never been hurt I can definitely see why you wouldn't program that into the general public and I can see why over time it would be um, you know a bad habit to get into but if you do them right, if you have, you know, some of these built-in external things like a chair or um, a pad for your chest to go down on a push-up to keep your neck in alignment with your torso, then, you know, you know you're doing well. Even if you don't have a coach, you know you're going, you know, at least 85% there, and that's usually pretty good. And you know, like I said, the young man was uh, young, he's healthy. I didn't feel bad about giving him sit-ups. I normally don't program the sit-ups at people's core. Part, portions of the routine simply because I don't think that's the abdominals intent. I think it's more designed to resist momentum and that helps shift a more better understanding of using your glutes where and maybe habitually in the past you've been using your lower back. So just my thoughts on an interesting situation. Uh, feel free to email me. Um, I'm trying to make my website a little bit more accessible so I uh, do think I do have my uh, email on there. Be sure to reach out if you got any questions, if you got anything to add, if I got anything wrong. Uh, the main thing here, I don't care who gets credit for it. I just want good good knowledge out there based on uh, good data, good, good information. So um, keep watching. I'll keep writing. Keep posting exercises. We'll talk to you.